Joey, there's somebody out there. Huh? Outside, something was howling. Well, my favorite horror films have an air of fantasy about them. Uh, I've never really been um, too fond of uh, mad butcher movies or uh, pictures about um, you know um, crazy knife wielding psychos. Uh, horror films, I think, are much more effective when they take place in a sort of a dream world. Uh, in movies, movies are really just sort of dreams on film, and uh, in order to really scare an audience, I think, uh, as The Exorcist did. Uh, you have to appeal to very deep-seated fears that, that uh, aren't necessarily a part of the external story. The freedom I had on the picture was really great because I was hired by, you know, Joe Dante and Mike Fennell, the uh, producer and the director, and um, they basically let me do whatever I want to, and that's really rare in this situation because I'm only 21, and who's going to, you know, trust a 21-year-old to pull off these big, you know, effects in this movie that's supposed to be really good? And they came to me and showed me this script, and in the script it just says, you know, Eddie changes into a werewolf. And I said, well, you know, usually in scripts you have a description of what happens and the director has a very precise idea of what is going to happen. But Joe and Mike know me, so they said, you know, do whatever you want to do as long as it's good and spectacular. And I think that's what it is. So. I don't see horror films normally. I really hate the gores throughout the whole of the Second World War. And I've seen more people um, blown to bits than I can say. I'm lucky to be alive. And uh, I really hate things being crushed, exploded, blasted. But this film has the distinct thing, and this is what I have read in these werewolf books, is that the most terrifying thing is when you're an ordinary person and suddenly the situation or the person becomes extraordinary. That's what Hitchcock was so surprising in, and that's what makes this film so horrifying, is that the people in it are perfectly ordinary people until these startling and awful things happen. That's what I find exciting about the story. Classic werewolf can change shape any time it wants, day and night, whatever it takes a notion to. That's why I call them shapeshifters. I got a dozen books on it. What about killing it with silver bullets? Well, sure. Silver bullets are fire. It's the only way to get rid of the damn things. They're worse than cockroaches. They come back from the dead if you don't kill them right. Plus, they regenerate. You know what that is? Cut off an arm, cut off a leg, stick a knife in a heart, nothing. They may look dead, but bam, three days later, they're as good as new. The whole thing about the Avengers was that we used to look at it slightly tilted, and Joe Dante has done that with this film. The whole of life is slightly tilted. We don't know what's around the corner. We don't know when the nuclear bomb is going off. We don't know whether our people will suddenly have dreadful operations, whether people will suddenly get run over. There are always these fears. It plays on those sort of fears as well. And then suddenly you laugh out of uh, relief. If you don't give the audience something to laugh at in a picture like this, uh, chances are they'll find it in the wrong place. And uh, some of my favorite films, some of my favorite horror films, like The Bride of Frankenstein and Invisible Man, uh, are pictures which combine comedy and horror in a, um, a they, they juxtapose them in a way that uh, makes the horror a lot more effective. Because um, once the audience has laughed, they're a little off balance, they're a little more relaxed, and then you can sort of hit them. When we started the picture, we didn't want it because it's now 1980 and this, uh the old techniques of transforming somebody into something they're not supposed to be um, used to be a technique called the lap dissolve, at which they would like pin down, you know, Lon Chaney Jr.'s ears and they'd say, okay, hold still. And they'd come and they'd glue hair on his face, you know, and then they'd take a picture of it and then they'd come in and glue a little more and then they'd start putting on a nose and they'd dissolve all those pictures together. And what you end up with is a very undramatic uh, transformation, but really neat for those days because it was a miracle they even did that, you know, and it was done very slick. But today, um, to make this picture different, we had to not use camera tricks. And when we shot the actual werewolf transformation through a series of mechanical effects, the actor Bob Picardo, who plays Eddie Quist in the most elaborate transformation in the film, actually changes into a dog, you know, nine feet tall dog, before your very eyes, with uh, out camera tricks. His bones start breaking and his chest starts bursting open. His nose on his face starts cracking and twisting and going forward. His teeth start growing, you know, his eyes start changing color, his neck blows up like a bullfrog. His ears start stretching, you know, his neck starts stretching and his legs start going. He grows fingernails on camera. Um, and he basically changes into this huge uh, monster, which I think is uh, pretty unique. There was a lot of concern uh, when we started out making this film, since this is, for instance, the first werewolf film, uh, the first film made about werewolves in the past uh, 20 years, really, uh, that the 
acting and the quality of the characters would become subordinated to the special effects. All too frequently in a film like this, uh, the special effects become the movie. And the real test of a good horror film or a monster film, I think, is to uh, how good is it when the monster isn't on screen? I play a civilized man in this um, civilized, what am I saying? I play a psychiatrist. But anyway, one of those phony psychiatrists that are on television, and I take her up because I want to see her nude in a tub. A lot of nudity in this film, which is really great fun. And they sit around in my place, sort of Esalen like type place, you know, and uh, they all turn into werewolves. Well, that's a bad thing to happen to you anyway. Since the advent of uh, the rating system, uh, the movies have um, generally become more graphic. Uh, it's partly to compete with television. It's partly because you can't do what's already been done and expect people to find it exciting. Uh, it's, in some films, it seems to have taken a um, somewhat morbid turn. Uh, there are a lot of films that are extremely graphically violent. Uh, we tried to make the film exciting in the old-fashioned sense without uh, making it gratuitously um, revolting. I saw this film in New York, and I was terrified. Then suddenly it's very funny, and then it's human. I, I think it's way, way above what you call a horror film. And of course, Bertin's work is something quite extraordinary. I never want to see the film again, because the first time was so extraordinarily exciting. I haven't had anything like it in the cinema for a long time. Hello? 